Hey everyone, how's it going? Juan Das here, and welcome to this week's YouTube lesson. And I wanted to talk about triads. I'm slowly making my way through this list that I compiled thanks to a bunch of you guys that have suggested some great topics, and triads was one that came up, I think, more than once. And I thought I should do more of a fundamental video, because I haven't done one in a while, and I think it's a, it's a good way to reach out to some people and just, um start building some concepts from the ground up. Um, now, this is going to be looking at some ways that you can start to integrate triads if you haven't already, or if you understand the theory about building triads, building chords, but haven't really mapped it out on the guitar yet. As I see, that's a common issue that seems to present itself in lessons and teaching. Um, so let's get right into it. And first, I want to establish why triads are such a fundamental part of music. It's one of the first things we learn about when we first learn about chord construction, we go to triads, major, minor, augmented, and diminished. And as far as the guitar is concerned, they're really great shapes for applying ideas, and they're very readily accessible. Um, actually, even when you start getting to more advanced concepts, like uh, superimposing different triads to get over a chord to get different sounds, a triad is a great go-to idea because of its directness. And even when it comes to understanding the fundamentals of harmony, it's good to understand, one, how triads can move, which we'll cover a little bit of today, and two, it's also good to understand where your root third and fifth are at any given moment in time, even when you're playing standards, chances are you're going to be resolving to these chord tones. Um, more than anything else, so it really serves to get them under your belt. Now, how can we go about learning these? Well, the first step I would uh, suggest, and I'm going to suggest kind of three ways you can go about doing this, uh, they all kind of build on each other. So if you haven't done so yet, it's a good thing to start looking at these, or if you have, maybe check and see if you can do some of these, and this is great to see what uh, holes exist in your fundamental knowledge. So let's get into it. Now the first thing I want to cover is just learning inversions within a position. So some might be familiar with this kind of exercise. If I take the key of C major, so basically starting from the sixth string root and progressing through all of, well, the different inversions of each triad. So I've got root position, first inversion, second, and then I'm back to root position again. And the idea is that you go through uh, starting on a different inversion. So for example, I can start on uh, first inversion here. I've got E in the bass, and these are closed voice triads, by the way. Then take this to second inversion. and so on, until you cover your neck of the guitar. And actually, if you have the open strings available, try do it in the open position as well. And I'll get to that in a little bit because that's gonna be really important. Now this is a fundamental starter and it'll get you going through each of the possible shapes for any given chord type. And it's important to do this with minor, diminished, and augmented, although augmented you'll find that as you start inverting it, you'll start running into some very familiar shapes, and because it just simply repeats every major third, the exact position repeats. So then the next thing I would suggest is tackle this in different keys. It goes without saying, why do I suggest tackling different keys? It's because it starts to relate more to the actual notes you're playing and the actual sounds you're hearing as opposed to just learning a position. So that's step one, and it's pretty straightforward. Where it starts to get a little more interesting is when we get to, let's say, step two, which would be taking a single string set and running through your inversions. Now, what seems to be very commonplace, and I 
may have covered this in another video, I know I definitely mentioned this a lot in my private lessons, is that we as guitar players, and this applies to drop voicings or any sort of voicing, when we move through inversions, we have a very particular habit of starting on the root. Now this is all well and good, let's say we're in C major, because we're starting to go through the shapes. Let's say, if I'm over here on the fifth string set, fifth string root, sorry. That's all well and good. But then let's say we're starting in a different key in the key of G on the same string set. Most guitar players will try find the root position and then start the inversion sequence from there. What I would actually suggest is something a little different in that we start on the lowest possible available inversion given our string set. So let's take the key of G major for instance. We have G, B, D in that triad set. But that certainly isn't the lowest position available. So what about D? Or what about even lower, starting on B? Okay, that's great. We found our lowest available position in this key. So start here and then move through the inversions. Now this also applies for, let's say, minor. Let's say, I don't know, we pick F minor. So think of the notes that exist in F minor, F, A flat, and C, and then determine, okay, where is my lowest available note on the string set? Let's use the same string set we're working on. So it can't be A, we can't have an A flat because it simply doesn't exist, so logic would tell us it's C. So start, okay, there's second inversion, F minor. And then go through your inversions. Now this one's a little more tedious in that you've got several string sets to go through. However, if you've done the prior work of step one, you will have covered all your string sets anyway, so it's just stringing it together. And what you're doing is starting to, well, if the first step was more vertical in nature, which actually can also help you with your arpeggios, quick aside, this one's more horizontal. So you're starting to cover different grounds or different ways of visualizing your triads all over the neck. Do bear in mind this applies to major, minor, augmented, and diminished. Now, let's get to the third step, and this is a favorite of mine, um, and a favorite of many other guitar players who choose to uh, work on harmony and really dive in depth with it, and you can apply this also to spread triads. By the way, every exercise I mention, please do open up the triads. So, if you're working through your inversions, let's say C major, going through spreads and doing that across the strings. Do be aware of that. Uh, and this can also apply to drop voicings, but let's just focus on the triads. Now, the next thing I want to cover, and this is kind of the last thing, is voice leading. And this is where you'll begin to get an, an ear for how harmony can move. Because I think, again, we sometimes get caught up in the shape itself, and as we're practicing it, sometimes we don't break out of the shape. And we can only hear a triad or any chord shape as just a chord shape as opposed to an actual structure, and how that can relate to chords within a key. So this is great work, what I'm about to go through is great work for starting to hear how chords can function with one another. So let's take C major, key of C major. Now when it comes to voice leading, the way this works is you want to voice lead through cycles, and what that means is taking an interval set and ascending through the key in that interval set. So let's take cycle four for instance. This means we're moving through the key of C major in fourths. So I'm going to start on this familiar shape. So we've got C major, we're starting in second inversion. And what you always have to do, or try keep in mind, is go to the nearest chord shape possible in that interval set. So if we start on C, and we're going through C major in fourths, our next chord would be F. A fourth up from that, bear in mind this is all diatonic, so C, F, B diminished, 
Fourth up from that would be E minor. Fourth up from E minor would be A minor. Fourth up from A minor, D, then G, and then C. And you'll notice I've gone through the entire chord, or the entire scale, the entire key if you would. Right? Now, as a guitar player, it's good to be able to play this harmonically, but you can also try play it melodically, and this will generate some interest in, or maybe interesting ideas to pursue in your linear playing. Sounds even better with spread triads. Even more contrapuntal because you've got that wider interval set. So bear in mind that when you change the interval set, the, um, the number of common tones you have changes. So let's say I'm doing cycle six. So I'm ascending in major sixth. Or, sorry, diatonic sixths. Starting on C major, a sixth up from C major in the key of C would lead us to A. Notice we have more common tones. We've got the C and the E is common, and then the A moves. Then a sixth up from that will be F. Sixth up from that, D minor. Sixth up from D minor uh, will be B diminished. Sixth up from B diminished, G major. Sixth up from G major will give us E minor, and then we're back to C. Now, you can try this across different string sets, different interval groups, whatever it may be. Again, bear in mind this is all fundamental work, and it's important to do this in different keys. What you can also try to do is move this to different scales. So try this in C harmonic minor, your triad sets will change. Try this in C melodic minor, uh, I'm just using C as the key, uh, if you want try harmonic major, whatever it may be, try this voice leading exercise, and if you want a good ear training uh, tip, try sing each line of the chord. So for example, if I'm doing C major again, and I'm moving in cycle four, I can sing the top line. I can sing the inner voice, so or I can sing the lowest voice. Was that right? C, F, yeah, B flat. And go through the key. Now, as you do this with different keys, you'll find your ear has to force itself to tune into a specific interval group. And if you do this with spread triads, you'll find that your ears start picking up on not just how the chords move, but how the individual voices move. And that's kind of the foundation for just voice leading in general, no matter whether it be through a tune or through a set of changes, or if you're improvising voice leading. So I hope this lesson was really helpful for you guys and just served as a good fundamental uh, work out, if you will, to see whether you can get your, whether you have your triads already in order, or if you haven't yet, some great ways to start integrating this stuff in a really accessible way and just giving you some quick drills to work with. Aside from this, as always, do try to apply this in musical settings, in tunes, in pieces, in uh, progressions, whatever it may be. There's no substitute, no better substitute, if you would, for actually making music with this stuff. The exercises just serve as a technical study and a way to get this stuff under your fingers. So I hope this was super helpful, and I'll see you in the next video.